Good morning, everybody. My name is Nick Berkthold. I am the head of post-production for Fine Brothers Entertainment. And today, we're going to be talking a little bit about creating high-quality content for the web at rapid speeds. Now, a little bit about me. I've been in the industry for about 15 years. I've been at Fine Brothers for about three years now. Over there, I'm leading a team of about 20 uh, editors and designers. We're working really hard. We produce 15 original series for the web every single week. It's about 120 minutes of original content that we're putting out every single week. And um, if you're not familiar with our, our company or the things that we're producing, we're also doing things for uh, TV platforms and S5 platforms. I'm going to show you a couple of quick clips here of some of the stuff we're working on. Let's make America great again. You're just gonna make it worse. They are fried bull testicles. I do not believe I put these things in my mouth. I don't even put my husband's in my mouth. It's all in the execution. Is this a joke? <laughs> Julie. Oh my god, oh my god. You are under arrest. God damn it! This season on six degrees of everything. <laughs> Whoa! That makes me so mad! Yolo. You only live once. Peach or Bart? Oh no. <laughs> that would be me if I got Adele tickets. Actually, that was me when I got Adele tickets. Oh. What the f <laughs> You're definitely a poser. Five, two, three. Don't pop my boob. Don't pop my boob. Oh my god. Pause. Slipped on banana peels and fell down three flights of stairs. You won't know what hit you. Bye, Felicia. Okay. Thank you. So, as you can see, we are producing a lot of different kinds of stuff, a uh, huge variety of content. Oops. I'm not going to update this right now. So the stuff that we're putting into the web, um, we're producing these shows primarily for YouTube as our main distribution platform. Additionally, the YouTube, we've started expanding into other platforms, such as Facebook, Twitter, Musical.ly, Instagram, Snapchat. And we've seen a lot of success as we kind of expand our distribution channels. For every episode that we're putting on YouTube, we're creating that same episode for each various platform. And we're doing things like changing the branding, modifying the in-episode graphics to match the platform that it's going to. We're also creating cut-down versions of those, highlight clips, uh, little snippets and segments to help engage with our audience and uh, get them excited about the episodes before they release and get conversations happening after the release. Additionally, we're creating caption versions of all of our episodes. And those are primarily for Facebook and Twitter. Now, YouTube has a closed captioning functionality built into their player, but Facebook and Twitter don't have that yet. So we're creating these versions with the captions burned in. They look a lot like this. You probably see them every day on Facebook. They're insanely popular. They're very shareable. They become viral very quickly. Um, and we do these for all of our episodes. Now, to kind of give you an example of how successful these kinds of videos can be, this is a show we do. It's called Kids React. A couple weeks ago, we released this episode, Kids React to ACDC, on Facebook in its first week. 4.2 million views. That same time, we released a second version of this episode. It was a captioned version with the titles burned in. In that same episode, in the same amount of time, 42 million views. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a staggering number. It's 10 times the amount of views 
because you're doing the captions burned into the video. Um, and these are actually really easy to make in Premiere. And so I'm going to take a quick moment and show you guys how we do these and just how easy this can be. So I'm going to go into my project here. Sorry, just give me one second to pull up an app. I'm going to make this easier for you guys to see what I'm doing here. OK. So I'm in a project file. This is a template project file that we've created that we use uh, when we make these captions. There's really nothing special to this. It's a normal uh, sequence. If we go into our sequence settings, you'll see the only special thing we're really doing here is we're changing the frame size. This is going to be 1,000 pixels by 1,000 pixels. And we do that to get that one-to-one -one aspect ratio. Facebook really favors the square videos. It shows up much cleaner in the timeline and makes it much easier for people to scroll and stop on the videos. So we do the one-to-one -one aspect ratio there. Now, our episodes obviously we release in 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So I'm going to go ahead and pull an episode into our project. This is a series we do called Do They Know It? This episode is called Do Teens Know Tom Hanks Movies? I'm going to drop this into my sequence. Now, you can see it's going to warn me. It's going to say, hey, your sequence settings don't match the clip. Do you want to change your sequence settings? This is because I'm importing a 16 by 9 video into a 1 by 1 sequence. And I'm going to say, no, I want to keep ex existing settings. Obviously, the left and the right sides are cropped here, so I'm just going to right click. I'm going to go set to frame size. This is going to scale my video down to fit this square box. It creates some nice letterboxing on the top and the bottom here. And this is actually where we're going to be placing our captions. So next step here is I'm going to import what's called an SRT caption file. Now, if you guys work with a closed captioning company, these are files provided to you. Um, it's what times the captions to the video, the text that's displayed in the captioning. We hire a company that does these for us. If you don't work with a caption company, you're in luck, because you can still get these SRT files very easily and for free. When you upload a video to YouTube, they're actually going to create an automatic SRT file for your video. And usually that's available within 24 hours of the video being uploaded. The way that they do this is they use their speech to text engine to kind of automatically create these captions. So they're not going to be perfect, but it's going to get you a lot further than trying to type this all out manually from the start. So now that we have our caption file in our project, I'm just going to go ahead and drag this down to my sequence. You'll see it here. Now, you can barely see my subtitles. They're very small. So I'm actually going to double click this. It's going to open up the captions panel. And if you see here, this is where you can go through and you can modify your captions. You can change the time or the, uh, the text. If there's a spelling error or some sort of typo, you can go ahead and change that here. This looks good to go for me. So I'm just going to right click. And I'm going to go ahead and select all. It's going to select all my captions. What you're going to do normally, you would select all here. You would change the size of your font. You would go here into the position. And you would just change that to be centered. You would then use your effects controls. And you would drag this down to move your captions down here to the bottom part of your video, it's usually where they're placed. Um, the final thing I want to do here is I want to add a title to the top of my video so people know what they're watching. Now, we used to use the uh, titling tool in Premiere. The new version of Premiere has this cool function called the type tool. It's right here on the left. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to go ahead and create a box. I'm just going to call this video, do teens, no, Tom Hanks movies. I'm going to select all. I want to change the font here. So I'm just going to go down. This is Again, in the Effects panel, the Text tool, I'm just going to go and change this. We're going to make it an Arial Black. I'm going to go ahead and center it. I'm just going to change the size there to fit my video. Looks pretty good. It's a little off center on the top and the bottom, so I'm just going to move that down. Get that nice and centered. Drag that out. And just like that, you have a caption video file to put on uh, Facebook. These, again, are very viral. They're very quick and easy to make. And you'll find good success. Hopefully, your videos can also get 45 million views. All right, so I'm going to shift gears here for a moment. And I'm going to talk about the format that FBE is probably most well known for. And that's the React format. And we produce a series of shows around this 
Um, to get us started, I'm going to show you a quick clip of what this is, get you familiar with the content, and then we'll go ahead and talk a little bit. For this episode, we're actually going to be showing you highlights from a music and arts festival called Coachella. Oh, I heard of that. I've heard the Co Coachella Valley. Is that where it took place? I went when it first started, and it was just... Uh, <laughs> It's changed now, of course, everything changes with, but I just love seeing all the clothes and stuff. Oh, the radio head, he's kind of like Willie Nelson-like. That guy's as old as I am. Nice. I, I like that, I like their music. Such a cool setting, it's such a cool concert. Wow, awesome effects. If you go to Coachella, you better not be epileptic. You don't remember. I most likely shouldn't be making any acid references, should I? That's a, pretty much exactly what it is. It's people reacting to different things going on around the world. And we, fully, we feature different generations. We have elders, teens, adults, kids, amongst a few others. Um, these are people reacting to current topics or trends worldwide. This could be anything from the latest music video that just dropped. It could be a, a trailer for a movie that just came out, a video game that just came out, current events in the news, or a viral video that's going around and being shared. Now, one of the biggest challenges that we face with this series is that of timing and topicality. When you have a viral video, it has a very short lifespan, usually. It'll be a week or so before people kind of move on to the next big thing that came out. So the challenge is for us is producing this content fast enough and maintaining the high quality to be able to release it in time where people are still interested in seeing people reacting to that video. This is an example of our production schedule from last year. Last year, we were producing videos with about one week of a turnaround. We would shoot and assemble the episode in one day. We would take two days to edit the episode, get it to a picture lock with the producer. The next day, we would do finishing. These are things like graphics, color, sound. And then finally, on the last day, we would release the video. So this is almost a full week, a Monday to Friday turnaround time. And that worked for a long time. But what we found is as more and more people started going to the internet for content, the the lifespan of a video and the attention span of things that are viral and kind of hot at the moment kept shortening. Attention spans were shortening. The internet was speeding up. There was more and more kind of competing out there. So we figured we needed to get our videos out faster. Now, another thing you'll notice about this is that we're working eight-hour days here. So one of the things that we really value at Fine Brothers Entertainment is a 40-hour work week and a good work-life balance. So when we decided that we needed to speed up our process, we didn't want to sacrifice our quality of life to do that. The other thing that we really value is quality. We're known for our videos being of high quality, and um, we didn't want to sacrifice that either. We weren't going to change our format or reduce the quality of our content in order to get it out faster. So we had a challenge. What we ended up doing is we looked at the various stages of our process and figured, where can we find the efficiencies at? The first thing we looked at was our shoots. And we realized that we're shooting way too much content for what we're actually editing. We're letting cameras roll. We're uh, not cutting the cameras when in between the questions and stuff like that. And so we figured out by making efficiencies in the shoot, that would translate down to the edit. You've probably all heard of uh, shooting for the edit, right? It's a real thing. You should be doing this always. Um, so once we figured that out and we cut out all the inefficiencies, it actually shaved four hours off our edit process. Ensuring that shaved an hour from the sit down and the producer, lo the picture lock. And so we then looked at our finishing process and we were able to find efficiencies there using things that were coming out in Premiere at the time, like master clip controls and the Lumetri color panel, um, the increased efficiencies and the dynamic linking between After Effects and Premiere. This allowed us to shave two hours off the finishing process. And that was really cool because it now meant that we could move our entire schedule up a full day to get our episodes out in three and a half days. So we were really happy about that, and that worked for a while. But of course, the internet continues to speed up. Content continues to 
come at a, a rapid pace and we're constantly challenged with time. So we needed to figure something else out. We knew the one thing we wanted to do is figure out how to get the editor working on the project at the same time that the assistant editor is doing the assembly and the string out. At the time, it was too difficult. Um, we tried you know, kind of kicking out different project files and importing those into other projects, using XMLs. And it was just too complicated for the way our workflow and the way we edit works. Um, a Toby Teams platform came out around that time, too. And that was really exciting for us, because that meant with the Teams platform, we were able to have an assistant editor and an editor working in the project at the same time, collaborative editing. This completely changed things for us, because it now meant that we could bring in the editor just a few hours after the shoot started that day, and they could be right behind the assistant editor working in the project simultaneously. As string outs were being built, that could kick right over to the editor. They could start editing. And we were able to do our editor's cut on the same day of the shoot, which was a big win. That moved everything up again. And we're, now we're at two and a half day turnaround for our episodes. So that's just a few of the ways that we do things at the rapid speed. But what about quality? Like I said, quality is important. We want to maintain high quality and high production value in our episodes. So I'm going to show you a, a series that we do. It's called Sample School. I'm going to sh show you a quick clip on this. Um, it's an example of a show that we produce with very high production value. And we produce this one in very rapid speeds. I'll show this clip, and then I'll just explain to you a little bit about the things that we're doing here. When is a song fully original, and when is it not? Music has a layered history, so you might not know that a song you love is sampling from a song in the past. Some are obvious, some aren't. But we've got you covered by breaking it down every episode. This is Sample School. For the final episode of this season, we'll be taking a look at Famous by Kanye West. Some people view him as an egomaniac, while others think he's a musical genius. Regardless of what you think of Chicago Ray's Kanye West, his influence on music culture and the art of sampling has been undeniable over the past two decades. Kanye released Famous off his seventh solo album, The Life of Pablo, which peaked at number 34 on the Billboard Hot 100. Its instrumental is quite layered, as it includes three beat changes during Kanye's lines, Rihanna's hook, and another near the end of the song. Another song, another sample surgery. For all the girls that get from Kanye West, if you see him in the streets, give him Kanye's best. Why? They mad they ain't famous. Goddamn. All right. All right. So as you can see, there's a lot going on in that, in that show. Um, everything that we're doing there is animated graphics that we're animating directly within Premiere. There's some dynamic linking that we're doing between After Effects and Premiere for some of the other things. I'm going to go ahead and go into that project file and show you how we're doing this. Now, what's cool about this series is that when we did the first episode, this took us almost 60 hours of time to get the first edit out from start to finish. Six episodes in, when we finished our first season, we got that edit time down to 15 hours. And we're doing even more quality with the content and even more things going on in the project. The way that this works is you can see my timeline here. There's just stacks of images all kind of stacked on top of each other. And they're all animated into the sequence. If we go to our effects control here, you can see it's, it's all position keyframing. Uh, we use rotation keyframing a lot, scale keyframing a lot. And we just do this for every image within that edit. Now, this probably seems like a lot of work because you have hundreds of clips. Uh, you have to keyframe each one. It's very time consuming. But what we actually do is we have a template sequence. And as you can see here, a lot of these things are actually kind of pre-laid out for us. So we have uh, different clips here. These are different segments within the episode. And each of these elements is pre-built and kind of pre-animated for us. Now, when we go to make an episode, and we need to make it work for that episode, we do have to change a few things out. So this is from a previous episode we did on Drake. Um, I want to use this asset in my edit. So obviously, I need to swap this out uh, for a clip on Kanye. If I just go to my Drake clip here, I'm going to right click this. And I'm going to say Reveal in Project. It's going to show me exactly my bin where that clip's located. I'm going to right click on that. I'm just going to go to this Replace Footage function. I'm going to find my clip. It's right here in my Graphics folder. It's a clip of Kanye standing relaxed. 
could go ahead and say, that's the one. And just like that, it's updated the graphic, and we now have Kanye instead of Drake. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go ahead and paste it into my sequence. And there it is. So the animation's all there. It all carries through. We do this for a lot of different parts of this episode. And it makes it very quick to go in and just kind of update everything for the episode uh, that we're covering. Another cool thing about this episode is we have this segment called sample surgery. And this is where we're going in. And we are analyzing the beats that are in these kind of like hip hop songs or, or the tracks that are sampled in these songs. A lot of these tracks are from old uh, songs from back in the day, 40s, 50s, and 60s. And we have this waveform here, and this just gives us a nice visual to the song that's playing. So I'm just famous and listen to this part. So you can see here, as the music is playing, that waveform is vibrating to the beat, and it's changing to the beat. And that's tied to that track. And these are actually super easy to make. I'm going to show you just real quick how we do that. I'm going to go in here, and I'm actually going to delete that layer. And we're going to start from scratch. Now, this is how the edit would come to us, uh, kind of like pre-timed out, everything's locked, and now we're adding in all the animations and the graphics. I'm going to go into my template here. I'm going to find sample surgery. I'm just going to zoom in here. So this is a After Effects composition that we have embedded in the project called Waveform Creation Template. I'm just going to go ahead and copy that, go back into my sequence. I'm going to line that up there and hit paste. It's going to paste that right in. This is a little too long, so I'm just going to shorten it to the timing of that area. And you can see now it's a flat, it's a flat uh, waveform. So we need to put some music to this. So what we do here is we're just going to select the clip, and we're going to go to Mark Selection. It's going to set our in and out points here to the same timing as that layer. And I'm going to isolate my music track. Now, we don't want VO or dialogue or anything. We just want the music clean to build the waveform from. So once that's selected, I'm actually going to go to Export Media. I'm going to export this as a waveform. This is just a standard 4816 wave. I'm going to go ahead and put this on my drive here. I'm going to call this Kanye. Hit export. That's just going to take a real quick second. Once that's ready, I'm going to right click on my After Effects comp, and I'm going to go Edit Original. And this is going to open this composition in After Effects for me. So you can see here's our flat wave line. I'm going to import my audio file. So we're going to find Kanye.wave. I'm just going to drop this into my composition. This waveform layer, this is where the effect's actually happening. So I'm going to open up this in my effects control. This is an audio spectrum plugin, is what it's called. This comes standard with uh, After Effects. Real easy to use. On my audio layer, I'm just going to go and I'm going to change that to say Kanye. Just like that, your waveform's matched. I'm going to save that, go in the Premiere. Because of the dynamic linking, it's already in. And we're done. Real quick, real easy. So I'm running out of time. Before I go, though, I want to share with you guys a recent victory that we had at our company that we're really excited about. Uh, before I get into it, though, I'm going to show you a quick clip and explain to you why this is so cool for us. I can't talk about that. What the hell is that? Uh, what is that? The Vader's mask, maybe? Was that Kylo Ren's mask? I'm trying, I'm trying to catch every little detail. The bottoms. <gasps> it's like shaking. And it's like the Jedi symbol. Oh! 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 Right with the lightsaber! Right with the lightsaber! Oh. There's, there's the chills. Yeah, just happened right comes. there. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Training montage. Yeah. Christmas death ever! Oh, I cannot come soon enough. It's Christmas. Whoa. Oh no, are we having like pod racing? Pod races? Ugh. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, ho. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god. Yeah, oh, Falcon's god. back. Yeah. I only know the one. Music. That is Saber Sword there. Okay, Phasma's back. She's back! She's back! it is. To end. No! What? To end. Whoa. No. <laughs> to end. What? Shit. What the <laughs> f***? <laughs> All right.
right. So that was actually some of our staff geeking out to the new Star Wars trailer that came out two weeks ago. Um, what was challenging and cool about this is this trailer dropped around 10 a.m. on a Friday morning. Um, that was a challenge for us because of how our production schedules work. We don't film until Monday, which means this episode wasn't going to come out until Wednesday. We didn't want to wait that long because we're all super excited about this. So we kind of took it upon ourselves to put everything that we had done over the past year and all the efficiencies and stuff that we had figured out, put those to the test and see if we could actually shoot, edit, and release this episode in one day. And we did. So we shot starting 10 a.m. First shot rolled, started the edit around 11, after the assistant editor had already started building some sequences. The edit finished around 6 that evening, came out by 8 p.m. that night. And what was really cool is we were able to use all these kind of tools that we had figured out with the master clip control, the lumetric color panel, and most importantly, using the team's collaborative platform for team projects to allow us to collaboratively edit that project together. I think at one point, we had five different people in the project file working simultaneously. People building clips, people putting in graphics, people doing color correction and sound mixing. And it was just a really cool, exciting challenge. Uh, really happy we were able to just put that out on the same day and uh, satisfy our fans' craving for the, that trailer. So that's all the time I have, guys. My name is Nick Berkthold. I am the head of post for Fine Brothers Entertainment. If you have any questions about things you saw today, you can shoot me an email. My email address is nick at finebrosent.com. And I hope you had a good time. Thanks for coming out.